All right, guys, so we're going to be doing adductor assignments. If you haven't done your assignment yet, stop this video. Go back, do it yourself before you watch me give you the answers. I can't stress that enough. I know I say it every time, but... So the first image is of Anthony. His left leg, screen right, is pretty much just straight on. It's like textbook straight front view. You could just copy a, you know, a diagram. You shouldn't, though. You should try to analyze the forms and remember the diagrams and then when you're stuck you could go back and check the diagrams. His right leg uh, is twisted a little bit so we're seeing the inside. Okay so just let's jump right in. Uh, I'm gonna start with the top you know the landmarks are the obvious places to start. So the hip aces points, uh, the, the little you know the aces points of the pelvis and I'm seeing an angle downward a little bit from left to right and center line I'm going to actually draw a box for the hip, if you remember from the last episode. We, that helped us draw butts very well, so I'm just going to continue that, that concept. So aces points. Hips naturally tilt back just a little bit. And notice I'm showing a little bit of the right side, because when I look at the photo I could see a little bit of the, the side of the hip on on his left leg and not at all on his right leg. So I am just twisting that box a little bit. All right, from here, find that pubic symphysis. And in, you know, when we're doing adductors, that is kind of important because then we could find this inguinal ligament. And that's pretty much where, you know, what separates the adductors from the abs. But before we do that though, let, let's extend the leg cylinder out. And remember there is that drop in the hip before that cylinder pops out. Taper it a little bit and I am showing a little bit of the bottom of that cylinder because I feel like, if anything, it's coming towards us just a little bit. It's so subtle, though, it, we're pretty much just looking right at the, f the face of this. I do like to exaggerate these just a little bit sometimes. Gives it a little bit more depth if the legs aren't just going straight up and down. This leg definitely is not coming towards us, so I'm not going to push that. And then I know we're only really focused on adductors, but you guys should at least put some basic forms for the, you know, the, the tibia, fibula, the, the lower leg, at least a few cylinders in here, just because it, you know, it completes the leg. You got to get the story. The, the main thing that we want to capture here is the gesture of the pose and then figure out how do the adductors fit on this pose. And so if you don't put the whole leg, you don't really have the pose figured out. You know, and it could be really simple, just like something like this. You know, I am thinking of this as a cylinder. I might be making some of these too thick. I don't know. Maybe it's just at the joints. We'll see. Once I start putting the forms in, I'll, I'll kind of double check my thicknesses. But right now, as I'm laying this in, some of the joints are starting to feel a little bit thick. And that's making him feel like his legs are short. And he is a tall guy. He's like over six feet. So his joints are going to be, or his limbs are going to, should feel long. That's an interesting problem, right? He's very muscular, so he's wide, but he's tall, so his limbs are long. So that's an interesting balance. It's mainly, you know, the meaty parts of the leg are going to be wide, but then the joints, the bones, those don't get bigger when you, you know, grow your muscles. They just, they get a little stronger, but the joints will stay roughly the same thickness. So those will feel thinner compared to the really bulky muscle. So at the uh, the knee here, I'm just thinking of more of a kind of a, a boxy shape. Same thing on this one. Let's get that box in there. Okay, 
Okay, so again, staying very simple with these, I just want to make sure that the pose feels right before I move on. Sometimes putting a little box in the knee really helps to define the direction that it's pointing. Because without, you know, if I didn't show this front plane and side plane, it almost feels like the, the leg is pointing directly out to the side. But as soon as I add that front plane, it adds a little more context. Okay, good enough. So right now I have just cylinders for the upper legs. Let's start dividing some things. The first thing I usually look for, um, it's a really nice rhythm, it's a sartorius. So it goes from the aces point uh, across diagonally and then it, it attaches all the way down here on the, tibia, on the side of the tibia. One thing to keep in mind is the quad muscles uh, and specifically the, the uh, vastus medialis in here as it comes out. He's got a pretty developed one so it's going to push on the sartorius a little bit. So I got to make sure I don't put the sartorius all the way out here and then that makes his, his quads really underdeveloped. Or not underdeveloped, but more normal. Okay, so that's down here. Now up here, that's an important area. I mentioned it a little bit in the main lesson. Uh, there's this triangular front plane. The sartorius kind of defines one edge of it, and then the tensor fascia latte defines the other edge. It's kind of like this little triangle in here, and that faces forward. And on the other side, we have that as well. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna show that. You see this core shadow right here on the tensor fascia latte? That is the corner from side to front. And then all of this is a flat front plane including the sartorius muscle. And it swings around and attaches right in here. In here, again, it goes behind the quad, this, this medial quad muscle, and then rotates back around and we see it as a front plane up here. It's got an interesting twist. Okay, so let's finish this one off. The adductors the great thing about them is they're really simple because we usually don't see individual adductors. Sometimes in a really crazy action pose where something's activated or like when the legs are spreading, the tendons will be pulled tight and you'll see that stuff. But in something like this, the adductors are just kind of a big form. They're all grouped together into one thing. So we've already defined all the borders, right? We got the sartorius diagonally. We got the inguinal ligament, the abs at the top. And then, you know, right now we just have a rhythm going down the inside, which we need to define a little bit better. So, so now basically all we have to figure out is just this, this kind of cone shape that's in there. Before that, I, the only thing I really do want to define is that at the bottom, as it attaches to the knee, it is thinner and then thickens up in this meaty part up here. And then this part in here isn't as meaty. It's kind of, it's that part that's filled with the veins and the, the arteries and the lymph nodes. This kind of is a little bit more concave. And then as it comes in here, more medially, then that, that's where you get that real round cone shape, like that. You can see it with the core shadow that's where the, 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 uh, the plane turns the most. I'm defining these shadows in here. I think it's important to show that two-step design that I mentioned before, or in the main lesson. And the two steps I'm talking about are one, two, right? The, the quads 
have a front plane, then it kind of comes down, but it gets softened by, by the sartorius a little bit. It's more of a diagonal. And then as it comes into the adductors, you get another front plane, and then comes down the side. So that's the two steps. Okay, and I definitely didn't make him as buff as he actually is, or I, I spread his legs out a little bit too much. Yeah, I think I, I made his hips a little bit too wide overall. So when you guys do that sort of thing, you know, you, you make note of it, um, and then ideally you should just, you know, redraw it, redo it. Yeah, so in the beginning when I was saying that he doesn't look tall enough, he looks, he looks too wide, I thought it was because of, you know, the proportions of the limbs, but it, it was probably more of the hip width that made him look less tall. So, now we know. I'm gonna fix it, but I'm gonna fix it in Photoshop. So, here we go. All right, you guys ready? One, two. So I hope you found this assignment example useful. I got five assignment examples in the premium anatomy course. So if you wanna keep learning about the adductors and the rest of the body, head on over to proco.com slash anatomy and there's a whole bunch of premium content waiting for you. All right, guys, see you in the next one.